Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Our Lady of the Lake. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. Your readings can be found on page 1072. Please join in our opening hymn, number 624, Lift Up Your Hearts, number 624. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, my name is Father David Bloom. I'm the Director of Vocations for the Archdiocese. And uh, today is a National Prayer for Vocations. And so uh, you kind of have a hunch what the homily is going to be about. And so uh, it's wonderful to be here and to help uh, Father Richards out as he is in the Holy Land. And uh, may he have a wonderful pilgrimage. Let us now turn to the Lord. Let us ask, uh, let us turn to him. Let us ask of his forgiveness as we enter into these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Prega and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, most of the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, It was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. But since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers and the leading men of the city, stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Ichium. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. from the book of Revelations. 
I, John, had a vision of great multitude, which no one could count, for from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, These are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the lamb who is the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. That applies to every one of us. Because there is this universal call to holiness, every one of us are called to be a saint. Every one of us are called on to glory. You know, that beautiful second reading uh, that we heard uh, from John's revelation, uh, all these people dressed in white, uh, holding palm branches. Uh, There is this eventual reality that is far beyond anything we can see here on earth. But every now and then, Someone gets a glimpse of it, and it's beautiful. And I remember uh, being called to the home. I got a call from uh, a parishioner years ago when I was uh, at a parish, and uh, she said, "Um, Father, I think you need to come right away and anoint Mom. Uh, This woman's mother was about 95 years old. She was in very good health, uh, as far as I knew. But this woman was sitting next to her mother's bed, And her mother turns to her and says, who are all those people at the end of the bed? Now, she was dying, uh, but she was doing pretty well. She had cancer, but she said, who are all those people at the end of the bed? And her daughter said, mom, there's no one there. And she said, oh, yes, there is. And they are all dressed in white. And so she called me, and she wanted me to, she said, I think Mom is about to go. I think the angels are here. I think she's about to go to God. And uh, so I came, and I anointed her. And um, so 
Uh, but there's this reality, this beautiful reality. Uh, and what does, uh, what does the Lord say in our gospel? He says, um, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. Well, um, of course, we can take ourselves out of the Father's hand. We can turn away from God, we can reject the Lord, and people do. People do. And um, today there is uh, a, uh, a, a, less, a lessening, or a, um, there, is, there is something going on in society and I think you know all about it. Uh, there are fewer and fewer people who are believing in God and turning to God. But uh, how tragic that is. And so, uh, so today is National Day of Prayer for Vocations. And we're going to pray today for vocations, but I encourage us to pray for those who do not believe or whose faith is weak and they're struggling. And maybe we've all been there at some point in time. Our faith has been challenge, so we have struggled with our faith, uh, struggled in our beliefs, and um, uh, we give that to the Holy Spirit. We say, Holy Spirit, lead me and guide me and help me to believe. And so today is National Day of Prayer for Vocations, and as a vocation director, I cannot uh, but speak on vocations. And uh, we do have this universal call to holiness, uh, and most uh, young people are going to be called to marry and to raise up a family in Christ, to raise up a family in the church and help them to believe in God and to serve the Lord with all of their heart, mind, and soul. But there will be some who are called to be a priest, some who are called to be a brother in a religious order, some who are called to be a sister in a religious order, or perhaps in some other form of consecrated life, and there are many. The problem is that we live in such a noisy world there's a lot of distraction, and um, it's, uh, it's a very serious thing in trying to listen to the Lord because, uh, well, believe me, the Lord can break through all the noise, but um, are we listening? Are we trying to listen to the Lord? And so if we're going to hear the Lord's voice, uh, sometimes we have to set down the phone or we have to turn off the television. We have to find a quiet place and say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Well, God has a calling on our lives. And um, did you know that we can actually feed the hungry and we can go to Mass and we can do many good things, nice things, really nice things, and not actually grow in holiness, even though we have this universal call to holiness. We can go through the motions. And if we merely go through the motions and check the box, I was at Mass, um, that's not going to cut it. It's not going to work. We're not going to grow deeply in love with Christ. Um, you know, we'll be along the surface, uh, walking along the surface. But the Lord wants us to go deep. He wants us to have that deep, deep love for him and that deep relationship. And so we have to challenge ourselves and say, do I really want to be a saint? Do I really want to follow the Lord? Uh, do I really want to follow Christ this day or not? In the things I say, the things I do. Uh, in uh, how I run my business, in how I act in public or in private. And so, uh, a, a great challenge to grow in holiness, uh, but it worked every bit of it. So, now in light of the first reading, I would say that we also have another calling, and, uh, you know, Paul and Barnabas went through all kinds of difficulties uh, in spreading the word of God in the early church, and so it's what I call the universal call to perseverance. <laughs> perseverance is so important in every walk of life, but if we're going to be holy, if we're going to draw close to Christ in a world that's drifting away from Christ, then we have to persevere. And so the church and the work of the church has always been resisted. Uh, it's most especially true in places where society has drifted from Christ or rejected the Lord. And so today, as in every age, uh, the church faces obstacles, and yet, like a ship in turbulent waters, it keeps on moving. Because it is human and divine. It is not merely human. If it were, it would have, uh, well, it would not have ever come to take root or grow. But it is human and divine. Uh, the divine part works really well. <laughs> it's the human part that has a problem now and then. 
And so uh, we keep praying that we would be holy. And so um, today um, I would say that, um, you know, we, we're called to have fortitude, sometimes long-suffering if we must. And so um, in the area of vocations, uh, there have been many years where, there, where I had heard a constant message that there were a declining number of priests and brothers and sisters in religious orders, and that's true. Uh, my parish priest kept talking about this. Uh, at the time, uh, he didn't realize it, but he had someone in his pews who was thinking about uh, seminary, going to the seminary, and possibly being ordained one day. And uh, so his message was actually kind of discouraging. But one day, I went on a vocations retreat. And uh, it was Archbishop Flynn. And um, I was pretty sure that, especially with what my pr uh, pastor had been saying, I was pretty sure there would probably be about three guys on the retreat. There'd be me and two others. And they'd be kind of strange. And uh, there'd be uh, the Archbishop. And it would just be a very long weekend. But I said, Lord, I think you're calling me to do this. Um, I walked in the door and there were 42 men in the room who were there to pray for the weekend and to ask the Lord to speak to their heart about their vocation. And it was beautiful. And so um, uh, there are so many young people who are uh, praying and asking the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do with my life? Where are you leading me? And I used to ask, Lord, could you just have it written on the ceiling? When I wake up, I look at the ceiling, I go here, do this, do that. Unfortunately, God's will is something that comes through, and uh, that understanding of his will happens through prayer. And that usually happens through silence or quiet, where we can find a quiet place. And that's probably why that retreat was so powerful, because we had, uh, some, we had wonderful times of recreation, but we had times of prayer which were so beautiful. And so the Lord was very present. The Holy Spirit was speaking. And I know that uh, in my work as the director of vocations for the Archdiocese, there are so many young people who are discerning their vocation. Literally, in the last uh, two months, we have had a lot of guys contact me, uh, about 12 guys who have contacted me. And they've asked uh, if they could visit about the possibility of entering seminary. And what does that look like? And they're coming from different uh, places, and some guys are literally ready to enter the seminary. Others are just kind of curious and wondering. And so um, <laughs> it's usually like, well, I'm kind of thinking about the seminary, sort of, but not really. Um, and I get an email like that. And uh, so anyway, uh, uh, so some of the younger men are uh, looking at our college seminary, and um, they're juniors or seniors in high school. Uh, there's uh, other, uh, older men who have a degree in chemical engineering, or uh, one guy's working as a finance analyst, another as electrical engineer, um, another as a chemical engineer. Just a lot of different backgrounds. And the Lord is speaking to hearts. It is the Holy Spirit. And it's because of your prayer. It's because of the prayer of the church. Now, at the Office of Vocations, we can do all kinds of programs, and we can do a lot of things, but it's the Holy Spirit that speaks to the heart. And so that's where prayer comes in, and it is so important. I want to say a little bit about our seminaries. We have two seminaries uh, here in the Archdiocese. We have a college seminary, St. John Vianney Seminary. It is a phenomenal place. Um, you know, it's uh, growing, it's expanding. Uh, they're building a new chapel right now. And uh, it is a very wonderful seminary. Uh, I, I can easily recommend guys there because I know that they will be blessed. About, oh, somewhere about one third of the men who enter as a college freshman uh, will go all the way through to uh, being ordained one day. Now, it may not sound like a large percentage, but um, the church is blessed because men who go there uh, who don't become priests, become better fathers. They become better husbands uh, and, um, and better council, finance council members and uh, active in the parish. And so uh, beautiful things happen in the lives of the men who enter this seminary. And then those who decide uh, or desire to go forward uh, to the major seminary for graduate studies, uh, they would go to the St. Paul Seminary, and uh, that is on the other side of St. Thomas. 
and uh, this seminary, I truly believe, is as strong as it has ever been. It is in the best condition and best shape it has ever been. I'm so impressed with the faculty there and uh, the staff, the rector, the administration. Uh, it's really a joy to work there at the seminary. That is where my office is located. And so our seminaries are holy and healthy places, and uh, the men who enter those seminaries are blessed, whether or not they are ordained. Now, a word to parents and grandparents. I just want to encourage you, uh, if you have a son or a daughter who's thinking about um, religious, uh, a religious order or the seminary, uh, this is something that is countercultural in today's world. Um, some years back, it would not have been, but today it really is. And so I encourage you to be open and receptive. I've seen more than a few guys who wanted to enter the seminary and their parents said no. And these would be guys who would enter as a college freshman. Um, to make this step, uh, they need your support. Um, I had some support as I was growing up. I remember my parents just saying, if you ever thought about being a priest, we think that would be a wonderful thing. Uh, I had no interest in being a priest but uh, they thought it was a wonderful thing, and uh, just knowing that they uh, were supportive was very helpful. So uh, it is easier to persevere in following Christ when we hear good news, and there's a lot of good news in the church. Uh, if the only thing you do is listen to the secular media, you'll never hear it, but uh, that's why we have other good sources for news. And one of the things I can say is that um, this year we had 56 seminarians in our college and major seminary right here in St. Paul. Uh, next year I believe we'll have 60. Uh, there are eight men, uh, they're high school seniors and they're lined up to enter St. John Vianney Seminary and there's about five guys who are looking at entering uh, the St. Paul Seminary. Uh, these are men who would enter for the first uh, time of uh, being in the seminary. And so, um, uh, what we have not heard much about are the new religious orders that are springing up, uh, the religious orders that are gaining vocations. And I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, <laughs> at the last Mass, I, I have a re distant relative, and he came up, and he's 91 years old, and he said, you didn't have to give us the whole load. Um, <laughs> I said, because you're here, I knew that you needed that. And so... But uh, I've actually trimmed out two or three pages here in this, in this uh, uh, homily because of his comment. But I do want to say that uh, this is going on. There are uh, new religious orders that are springing up. The Holy Spirit is working and moving and motivating uh, young and not so young people. And uh, women's uh, religious orders and men's. And so uh, this is an exciting time. It's an exciting time in the church. Uh, even uh, as we face all kinds of challenges, the Lord is always at work. The Holy Spirit is always moving and motivating. And so today we're called to follow the example of Paul and Barnabas and to persevere for Christ. It's easier to persevere when we know about the good things that are going on out there. And that's one of the reasons I want to just uh, highlight some of those things. Uh, so there are good things happening. Um, and uh, let us be a people who remember our universal call to holiness and also be a people who persevere. Persevere in prayer, seeking the Lord at all times. Uh, I will end with these words from Pope Benedict XVI. He said, and he was speaking to uh, those who would think about a vocation as a, a priest, as a religious brother or sister. Uh, he said, do not be afraid of Christ. He takes nothing away, and he gives you everything. When we give ourselves to him, we receive a hundredfold in return. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. 
I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now lift our prayers before the Lord. For Pope Francis and all the bishops, that they may be imitators of Jesus as the Good Shepherd and be filled with zeal and fervor in leading their sheep. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those governments who persecute Christians around the world, that may be converted and uphold justice and dignity for all human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all mothers who have given us life and love, that they be shown reverence and respect for all the blessings they give us, especially on this Mother's Day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each one of us gathered here today, that we may seek the Good Shepherd's voice and follow him where he leads us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone astray, that they may be found by the Good Shepherd and return to this welcoming community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are suffering, that through the sacrifice of Christ, they may find comfort in his goodness and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that they may now be with God and see him as he truly is. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I invite us also to pray for peace in the world, especially for peace in Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Lord God, we lift these prayers to you, all the spoken prayers and unspoken prayers of our hearts. We ask that you would hear them now as we lift them up to you in the name of Jesus who is Lord forever and ever.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to you, Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts. Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts you have brought we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate 
these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, Joseph, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to share my life, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We have four announcements today. We will not have Mass on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week. A new three-week Bible study begins on Monday, May 9th at 6.30 p.m., and Tuesday, May 10th at 1.30 p.m. See the bulletin for details. Lake Minnetonka Shores has many employment opportunities available. Please see the bulletin. OLL school board elections are this weekend. Please cast your vote and read candidate biographies using the QR code found in the back of church. Blessing to all moms on this Mother's Day. And it is a wonderful joy to be here with you again. Um, 
Now, don't tell the other two congregations, the 5 p.m. or the 8.30, but this one is the most alive, okay? <laughs> uh, so you sing well, you respond well, yeah, it's really great. And so I didn't even see even one person fall asleep during my homily. So <laughs> the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ.